and he's here with us in the midst and in a very uncertain time and and all that's going on and happening, we have a word of truth that is very certain, that we have wisdom that is given to us in, in the letters and in the books of this Bible that are very certain, that there is a, a certain comfort, that there is a certain power that comes from the Spirit of God that moves through the Word of God. And He is here with us in this place, I believe manifesting His presence among us today. Isn't that wonderful that we serve such an awesome God and, and, and he, is, he is right here, right now, for you and for me. Um, I, I'm, I'm thankful for, don't let her clap alone. Praise the Lord. That's for the Lord. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we get to spend time reading God's word in a, in a way that's, that's, we don't have to be concerned about someone coming in and, and breaking down those doors in this place of worship. We don't have to worry about hiding and, and, and being in, in secret. We get to worship freely and we get to worship openly. And not everywhere in the world gets to do that. Yesterday I was, or the day before yesterday, I was walking through a place and there was this big map that was laid out. And, and it, it was a map that showed the eastern and western hemisphere and all of the countries. And I began to look and, and just look at the sizes. And I'm like, United States really isn't as big as as we think it is when you look at all of it in scale it's like wow you know we are so small and how grateful we can be that we're not we're not in a place like in the 1040 window where there's crazy persecution going on for those who are followers of Jesus and proclaim his name uh, publicly or, or or allowed so I'm just grateful for that all right can you can you just be grateful with me that man we get to do this uh, together in a you know in a way that there is no, no fear of what could happen right now. And, um, you know, I, I love that we get to I, I be a part of, of something that is outside of these four walls. You know, we serve a certain God. We shared that. He's, he's so powerful, and he, he gives peace that goes beyond the human ability to even understand. And it, as, as the book of Philippians says, it guards our hearts and our, guards our minds through Christ Jesus, like he puts that guard against the worry and the fear and the anxiety that the world try, that, that can come very easily from the world and, and our, our place in this world and the things that we have going on in this world. But how many of you believe that God gives a peace and, and it's a peace that, yeah, one, this world can't offer. Two, it's a supernatural peace. Three, it's not a peace that you've got to try and, and earn or, or, or try and grab hold of. But it's a peace that comes from just resting in him. Do you believe that? You know, it's a peace that comes from when, when you can just find a place and a space and, and a moment and just rest in him. And, and there's all this other preoccupation that may be going on. But you say, this is my margin just to be with the Lord and there is no other distraction. It's amazing what God can do in that certain time and bringing that peace and that restfulness. When you open up the Bible, his word, the word, the word that is living and active in that marginal time, or you cut on some music and you just worship, or you begin to pray and meditate and just spend time with the Lord, how that comfort, the Holy Spirit is a comforter, the Bible says, the comforter, capital C. He's unlike anything that else that can bring comfort. He is the great comforter, and he just comes into that, that space, and, and he comforts, and he, and he is the, the one that gives that peace, and uh, I'm just so grateful for that. And uh, then we get to serve God together as a community. So much good that's, that's happening all over the place. And, and sometimes people will come to me and share, hey, there, there's so much going on. And, I'm, and, and they look concerned. And I'm like, yeah, isn't it awesome? Like, because it's, number one, if you have the right heart, all for the glory of God. And number two, it's not all dependent on a man with a microphone upon a platform. He's called us as, as missionaries. All of us who call on Jesus as Lord. He, he's called us as followers. He's called us as disciples. He's called us to come follow me, right? Follow Jesus. Whoever wants to come after me, deny yourself, take up your cross daily and follow me. And so there are people who have caught fire and you're following Jesus and then others are wanting to be a part of that. And that's exciting, isn't it? When we get to be a part of something that's way bigger than ourselves. 
And some of the, the, some of the people that are, are here, some of you, may, some of them may not be here today, but people who are, are doing so much even that's behind the scenes, and, and maybe you think it's little, you think it's something that is, is so like, it's not a drop in the bucket in comparison to what whoever else on a television might be doing. But let me share with you what you've done unto the least of these, what you've done in the secret place. Man, you've done those things unto the Lord. Great is your reward in heaven. There are grocery bags that, that go around from week to week, and the person or people that are giving them are doing it in secret and meeting needs, and, and, and there are, are clothes that are going around, and, and there are people like from week to week that are being helped. And the ones that are helping always, it seems oftentimes say, you know what, I don't want anybody to know and so on. And that's beautiful heart. But I just think of there's so much happening that we see and there's so much more that's happening that you don't see. And all that's happening, lives being touched for the kingdom of God by simple, simply hearts that, that want to be like Jesus in this world. Hearts that have encountered the love of Jesus and want others to encounter the love of Jesus. And I love that, man. That's what won me to ministry in the first place. So, so I thank you all for, for being a part of that. And, you know, the, the church is supposed to be, this is what the church is supposed to be, a reflection of Jesus in this world, right? That this church would be a reflection of Jesus in this, in this world, that we would be like Jesus and and I thought of yesterday as I was reading through my notes, I just started thinking about the Good Samaritan story and how the Good Samaritan story is, is uh, someone who is probably the last person that the religious leaders are the last person in that time in, in history when we have this story. The one that helped the Samaritan uh, was, or the, the Samaritan that helped the person that had been hurt and left um, on the side of the road, broken, beat up, no one, but just helpless. It, it was the least likely that helped that person. And I begin just to think of, man, you know what? Yeah, we love the least of these, but how many times could I recount? It's, it's the least likely that I find most often helping the least of these. And that's a church that is something I, I'm excited to be a part of. The, the ones that the, maybe the world would say, that's that guy, that woman, that person. Yeah. That one, together with more people just like them, being changed by the love and the grace and the mercy and the power of God, man, yeah, it's the least helping the least. That's what the kingdom of heaven is like here on earth. I love being a part of that, so thank you guys for, for that. Man, today I want to continue to share on and piggyback on, on really what we talked about last week, uh, miracles. How many of you believe that God is a miracle worker? You know, he, he is the ingredient in, in what miracles are, are all about. And again, all for his glory. I started reading to you all last week several stories, uh, Old, Old uh, Testament and New Testament. We looked at, at the his, history of different things that had happened throughout the Bible and, and used like a, an eisegetical uh, kind of, uh, of sharing with you, which is, you know, pulling out different portions of Scripture, but then talking about what was happening there and how can we apply this to our life right here, right now, not only for I need help, not only for I'm hurting and I'm broken and I'm pained and I'm in need, which are all exactly where oftentimes we find these, these things, these ingredients for a miracle to happen, but, but we also can look at these scriptures where the miracles were taking place and seeing how they were opportunities for God to call and use someone in a way that was beyond what, what they ever thought they were capable of doing. And, and I'm sure many of you have probably heard this statement, God doesn't call those who are qualified, but he qualifies those he's called. And, and I, again, I don't know about you, but there are many, 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 many times, many, many, and just keep going with the minis, times that I have felt so unqualified in something that God has called me to or the church has been called to as a whole. And then we just look out and wow, God, oh my goodness, simple acts of humility and obedience and trusting him in the area of the unknown and watching how God has absolutely transformed and helped and healed and restored folks. 
because we just say, yes, Lord, because we love him with our, our yes, because we feel unqualified, but we know God is absolutely able because he's a great God. He's a big God and he's a miraculous God. And, and so I love that he, you know, the God of, of miracles, and we're going to continue talking about miracles today. And, you know, the Holy Spirit is, is absolutely with us. The Spirit of God is indwelling in each and every believer. If you've given your life to Jesus, then immediately the Holy Spirit comes into your life. You're sealed by the Spirit of God. It's all throughout the New Testament talking about the Holy Spirit now in the life of the believer to lead you, to guide you, to counsel you, to empower you. Right? Amen? That's a good place to say yes. Yes. To empower you. With the realization it's no longer Dusty who's living in his own power and strength, which is absolutely impossible to live a godly life in my own power and strength. But now I am empowered by the Spirit of God to do so. And so that's, that's the heart of, of all of this and, and how we can still walk and work in the miraculous and in the supernatural. It's, it's God's super meeting us in the natural that makes it that way that way and him working everything on the behalf or the good of those um, that love him and that's us that he's called according to his good will so yeah the bible it, it's full of miracles and um, there are often times where where we feel like the helpless the helpless person or or there's a hopelessness where we see god's greatest miracles and i think that's probably one of the greatest ingredients in finding a miracle is, is understanding i have a need um and so I want to look at somebody, one of my, one, I say one of my favorite scriptures. You've been hearing that for eight years now. Uh, and Luke chapter 5, if you can turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 5, um, verse 12 is where I'm going to start. Luke chapter 5, verse, verse 12. Starts off in, in, in one of the villages, and I think we have it up here for you. Uh, in, in one of the villages... Excuse me. Jesus met a man with an advanced case of leprosy. And we talked a little bit last week about what leprosy is. Um, and we looked at the woman who had the issue of bleeding for 12 years and how the Lord moved in her life and brought healing to her life. And, and, and how she was very similarly treated like somebody who would have leprosy. And when the man saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground, begging to be healed. Lord, he said, if you are willing, you can heal me and you can make me clean. If you are willing, like this man had faith and believed that Jesus could absolutely heal him. Jesus reached out and he touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. Instantly, right away, the leprosy disappeared. And then Jesus instructed this man. He said to him, to tell, do not tell anyone what had happened. He said, now go to the priest and let the priest, let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed with leprosy of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. But despite Jesus' instruction, the report of his power spread even faster and vast crowds came to hear him preach and to be healed of their diseases. Now, I began, as I thought on this scripture, to think about my wife and I, because my wife is so much like Jesus and I'm so much like the leper in this story. And, and what I mean by that is my wife is, is she's, she's one to, to really think on something and she's one to really, before, before she shares, she's She's going to meditate and she's going to reflect. And, and, and me, let's say it's something good, like the man who was healed of leprosy. If it's me, I have only a fraction of the information. And I might not even have it, but halfway right. But I'm going to tell everybody I can. And if I don't, my head will explode. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I'm telling you, it's good to have a Proverbs 31 that will help you with that. But I begin to think, though, perhaps... The leper, like we have portions of scripture here that tell us, I've always thought, well, this guy, man, Jesus told him not to go and tell anybody. Why did he go and tell everybody? Maybe they just knew him with his leprosy. Maybe they just knew him 
with this great disease upon his body that he looked obviously physically different. He looked very sick. Body parts were drooping. Body parts could have been falling off. He could have been dragging a leg. He could have had blindness come upon his eyes. This could have been a man who looked really, really like leprosy had taken hold of him from the inside out physically. Yet now, because he had been completely healed, touched by Jesus, no longer was he a leper. He was now whole, not just healed, whole, inside out, all physical ailment gone in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So he didn't look the same at all. He didn't have to share a single word in order to be a walking testimony for people to see and know that man has been touched by Jesus. That man is no longer the leper that he used to be. Something is different about that man. It's obviously he had been, it's obvious he had been with Jesus. So I began to think of our story. Maybe, maybe there are many people here. You say, I'm not this great evangelist. I don't know how to speak to people. I'm not qualified. I have paralysis of the tongue every time I try. Let me encourage you. If you've been with Jesus, the leprosy is off your body. You don't look like the person you used to look like. Now, there's absolutely a transformation through the renewing of your mind and the goodness of God and in the word of God and spending time and meditation and reflection of all that God is capable of and the power of his word. That's absolutely why every day it's important to spend time with the Lord. But when you've been with Jesus, you don't look like who you used to be because that's not you any longer. You're no longer a leper. You've been in the presence of God. And the presence of God will absolutely change any and every person. He will change the one who has been broken and abused and hurt in ways that are indescribable. And he will change, completely transform the heart of a person that has struggled for years and years and years with unforgiveness and rightfully so. And, and he will change and transform the heart of a person who has suffered and struggled and wrestled with addiction for years and years and years and years. He is the one and when you spend time with him in his presence, you are no longer the same. You just can't be. And so when you are with him and then he says, go, you know, maybe this guy was a blabber mouth. I don't know, but I'm just defending him a little bit. Maybe he was a dusty. I'm just saying. But maybe people who knew who he used to be now sees who he is and knows something is very different. Something is very different. So they wanted to find the one who was the root cause of it. And his name alone is Jesus. Isn't that awesome? His name alone is Jesus. You know, leprosy is not a, a, a good situation at all. It's very tough. The diagnosis we talked about is the same, basically, as the woman who has the, the issue of bleeding um, last year or last week as, as we went through her story. She had given up everything that she had, all of her money, all of all, of, all that she could possibly use to, to help her case for 12 years, doctors, um, just anything and everything, and nothing could help her, nothing could heal her. And so because of that, much like the leper, she couldn't be in social circles. And this man, this leper, he could not be in social circles. He was probably defined like I just did as, as a leper. Like it's not just what he has, it's who he is, right? That person's an alcoholic, so, so they're, known, they're known by their disease or their sickness or their addiction or their pain or, or their brokenness, right? We're, we're called those things. This man was called those, those things and then... And then the, the society just shuns them. There's shame. There's lack of value. There's, there's worthless feeling. And, and then Jesus spends time and embraces them. I love it. He embraces them. And just like the woman, there's healing, but there's so much more even than a physical healing. There's an eternal perspective shift. There's eternity, reality of eternity that's shifted. There's a mind frame that's shifted there's a compassion. There's a, there's a presence given that these people, they didn't have and now they have. And I think it's so relatable to so many folks 
And then Jesus, in his mind-blowing, amazing, everything that he is, he doesn't just do it so that they will be healed, but all of a sudden they become a testimony to the world. You think, think about that. Like there's more to the healing than just being healed. It's that, which is good. But it's that the healing would bring opportunity also to glorify God and be a testimony to this world. Yeah, I'm telling you, there's, there's so much that God does in the midst of healing, but there's so much that happens in and after to testify on the goodness of God. The leper, he, he says, hey, are, are you willing? And of course, Jesus, yes, I'm willing to step in into your crisis, into your pain, into where, where you are, into your turmoil. And Jesus reaches out and, and he embraces this man in that kind of way. Instance, instantly, th- this man's helplessness and hopelessness transforms. You know, next, next week, Sunday, um, Sunday evening, we're going to hear from, from these folks who on the daily, they're, they're ministering to, to folks who are, are caught in these crisis scenarios who, who are, are in, in colonies much like a, a leper colony. And we're going to be able to hear how hope is brought into the hopelessness, whether it's through a, uh, a handout that leads to a hand up, whether it's, it's through just a word of love and act of, of kindness. But watch how it brings hope and help and the gospel message brought, brought forward through that. I started thinking about a couple years back uh, as, as I'm focused in on, on the, the leper, this, this, this man who struggles with leprosy. And, and I begin to think about our, our missions trip that we took a couple years back to Mexico. And we're there one, one evening, one night, we go into what is called the tent city which is right along the border uh, of Mexico and the United States. And there are countless refugees as far as the eyes can possibly see. Uh, there are just tents for, for just all, as, long, as far as you can see. And, and there, there are people from all different backgrounds and different countries. Of course, Mexico, other countries in, in mid and in South America. There, there was a, I remember a, a whole, like, more than 100 probably tents that were all, it was a, just a Haitian community that was there trapped and no man's land trapped, just in between two worlds and no money, nothing. I mean, the water that's there is, is, it is what they have. Sometimes it's clean. Sometimes it's not just depending on if, if the city or the people who do that, the gut, whoever it is, gets to it quick enough. And, and so we're bringing them food. We're bringing the meals, hot meals that night, and we're handing out the food. We're set up like an assembly line. We're handing out the food, and, and we're just, we're on mission for the Lord, and, and, and we're sharing the love of Jesus, and, and we think we're going to run out of plates, and then there's the bread and fish story. Uh, Lord, multiply it, and of course, like, God is amazing, and there was enough food for everybody, and I think Brother Richard got to eat a couple meatballs as well, and, and it, we're, we're sharing the gospel. Like, a, I get to kind of do, like, an open-air thing. I say, I get to. I'm, I'm I have fear that almost wants to paralyze me. So I shared the gospel like open mic without the mic, just in the public setting. And, and I think somebody else did the same thing. And there are children that are just dirty, dirty, that are just playing around and, and, and different, different languages and different colors, but no barrier. They're just with one another in this no man's land of a place. Hopeless and helpless. And here we are, just, just in a, like a moment that... Maybe some people think, it, why does it, even, it wouldn't even matter. You're there and then you're gone. Here's where the miracle comes in, I believe. Faith comes by hearing. That is hearing the word of God. By this the world will know that you are my disciples in the way that you love one another. Loving the least of these. The story of the Good Samaritan. All throughout the gospel message especially, we see an unconditional, unparalleled, supernatural, miraculous love that is put on display all for the glory of God so heaven could be opened wide. Maybe, just maybe, 
what's going on in Israel, what's about to happen in Hope for Appalachia, what went on in Mexico. When we go for a moment, that moment could be a seed. That moment could be a little bit of water upon a gospel seed. And you could bring hope into the lives of the hopeless. Maybe it's a child that heard that message shared and from, an, from an open scene and, and then we leave, but that child continues to hold on to that message and they grow up to be a preacher or, or a missionary or maybe they grow up to be a businessman or woman and they just love God with all their hearts because of that story. Maybe they grow up to be a teacher or a nurse and, and, and because of what they heard, there was hope to get them there. Maybe it was somebody who was about to take their life in a tent that night, but they didn't because they got a warm meal and somebody who shared it with them, they said, can I pray for you? Let me tell you, there was lots and lots of prayer that was happening. People who didn't know how to pray, but Pastor Dusty, I don't know how to pray. Just tell them Jesus loves them. They don't understand you anyway. <laughs> but let me tell you, the Holy Spirit can break in and break, break through every language barrier. The Holy Spirit is, is, is not fragile. He, he's not timid. I mean, he's like, if you'll, if you'll open the door, he'll walk through, right? He's already knocking. Just let him in and let him through. And then the miracles happen. It's the power of God. When, when we are simply obedient in the little things, it could be so little, but when we are obedient to do the things the Lord has spoken and put in our heart, that's when miracles happen. So we have all throughout Scripture miracles that seem like, was that real? Let me encourage you that miracles are still happening for those who will be obedient. It may not always look like a limb growing back or eyes that, that were physically blind being open. But when spiritual eyes open up, when a spiritually dead person raises to life, that's better than the man whose physical life came back to life uh, and maybe he continued to live in the world. Have you ever thought of it like that? There are dead people coming to life every day when the gospel goes out. So miracles are happening all around us every day and we get to be a part of it. You do. You get to be a part of it. Jesus reached. He reached out. I wrote down in bold and caps. In case you're wondering on my notes, I wrote it boldly and I wrote it in caps. All caps, all caps. Mission is not extracurricular. Mission is what the church is. Mission is what the church is. When Jesus came into this world, he was on mission, right? And he spent his life on mission. We're called to be like Christ in this world. I'm thankful for the hospital that this church can be and, and the, the vision that the Lord gave us that the, the, the church is a hospital for those who are hurting. And the Lord also takes those who are in the hospital and he heals that person and those people and those families and then he trains up so that we can go and be like Christ into this world and bring healing to others. The church, if you give your life to Christ, you are called to be a missionary. Maybe it's here in, in your yard right here, your own backyard, but you're called to be a missionary. Mission is not extracurricular. Mission is prerequisite. It's the heart of Jesus. It's not what the church just does. It's the very heartbeat as to who we are. And so I'm grateful that I get to share with you all in, in that. And, um, you know, as, as we have different missions and ministries and stuff that, that are approaching us and, and springtime is, is approaching us and Easter is approaching us, Resurrection Sunday, um, I can't think of a, a, a more vulnerable time for the world to be reached than right now where churches all over are, are celebrating in a really, really big limelighted light. And you know that the gospel message hopefully is going to be shared all over the place. What better time than right now to strap on the hat that says, hey, I'm a missionary and the heart that says, who can I bring? Whether it's here, whether it's somewhere else, but into a church in a setting where that person will receive the gospel message. Maybe you're here and you've been, like, as we're sharing this, you're like, you know, I, there's this person in my family that I've just been really begrudgingly not wanting to talk to because, yeah, they need the gospel, but they're terrible. 
and you just don't think with everything, that you just know they're going to shut you down, let them shut you down for the glory of God. That's okay. At least when you get to heaven, there will be that. You try. But maybe, maybe, maybe that person is dealing with something on the inside and you had no idea. And you just started to share with them a little bit about the love of Jesus. And all of a sudden they start asking questions and you're like, say what now? And then you get to go from there. And maybe you don't have all the answers and that's what you're scared about. Guess what? You know what? I, I don't have all the answers to your questions, but why don't you come with me on Sunday? Or, or, or why, 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 don't we, why don't we just open up this, this Bible right here and we can, we can maybe look for some answers together. Look for those opportunities. Maybe the Lord is saying to somebody here, you know what? You've forgiven somebody, but you've never actually told them you've forgiven them. And there could be a healing in that, just letting them know. He said, you know what? I've healed them. I, I, I've forgiven them here. Now I'm going to move on with my life. But the Lord, maybe today he's stirring you and saying, you know what? You're supposed to go to that person and something powerful is going to happen in the midst of, of that. There's going to be some transformation. There's going to be a redirection that's going to happen in that person's heart because what they didn't realize, maybe now they do. And God is going to use that in a miraculous way. So I don't know what's going on here right now today, but what I do know is that God is the God of the miraculous and his desire is that miracles would break out all around us. He's looking for obedient hearts. Are you with me, church? Amen. Let's stand. Let's pray. And so, Father, we just lift you up, God. I thank you so much that, that you are the God of miracles.